Guys, welcome to game two between Jess and Fisheye. Just starting the bottom left hand corner is the purple Zerg upper right hand corner. We have Fisheye as the gray Protoss. This is going to be on Blue Storm. And knowing this map and its mechanics, if you're actually, I'm realizing some people might not be familiar with Blue Storm. It's like a 2008 map. You have a natural expansion, kind of a, a again, a rampless map. Natural expansion, pretty wide open uh, area to it, a little bit of a gap right there, a big ramp leaning down which means it can be pretty well exposed uh, to ground, like top-down attacks is what I want to talk uh, talk about. It's almost like a lot of this map is inverted, where the it's attacker's advantage all the way across. Mineral only here at the 9, and then you have a really, really exposed edition. They're just really, really far away. You have one at the 12 o'clock, one at the 6 o'clock, one in the upper left-hand corner. It is a small mineral map, so oftentimes if it is going into like the longer games, it can come down to starvation matches. And you have this lane right across the middle that... You can see it's just kind of, you can cut the, you basically can divide the map in half in kind of an awkward way. And can make some interesting engagements with the kind of the high ground, low ground advantage. We do see a pylon being plopped down for Fisheye at the natural expansion. Jess uh, currently building an overlord force, which suggests we're maybe, well, at the very least we'll see overpool. We do see a drone setting up to go ahead and drop that overpool. Zergling's very, very tough to deal with early. And it'll, honestly, I've seen a lot of misplays for early game Protoss in their front, really not studying, I think, the map and knowing how to plop down a uh, tight wall on the front um, to deal with early Zerg run bys or anything of that sort. Probe wandering in, see that spawning pool about halfway finished and can be annoying otherwise. So there's the forge plopping down. Probe going to go ahead and grab some minerals before returning back to home base. And the question is now from Jess, does Jess follow this up with a, is this kind of a respect thing to go ahead and force that forge, force that cannon? Or are we going to see nine Zergling, or sorry, nine Zergling, a full grouping of Zerglings off Larva to push into this? Uh, just trying to harass that probe towards that natural expansion, get as much damage down. So when there's enough minerals, you can go ahead and take that natural. Interestingly enough, Fisheye not plopping down a cannon uh, to follow this up. So thinking that, okay, not going to be like full Zergling attack from Jess, and he is correct. So going to go, well, let's see if he goes Nexus first. Yeah, so plopping down the Nexus first and following that up with a cannon to follow. So no respect after sync, maybe because of that harassment on that hatchery, the natural expansion. So four Zerglings making their way across, maybe also relying on the fact that he can plug this gap with this, this kind of a race right there. Maybe he can plug the gap uh, with that probe. Trying to do so, isn't quite able to do so. Is getting some nice blockading with that drone right there and needs that time, honestly, because that cannon just now warping in. A gateway now blockading as well. So now, yeah, so Fisheye doing a pretty good job to get that Nexus up a little bit earlier. The cannon is right there. I do believe that is a seal on that right-hand corner, but just as that's warping in, at least one Zergling. Four Zerglings is not enough to take a cannon down. So just relying on the fact that Jess wasn't going to go for the full Zergling attack, in fact, didn't. But one Zergling does slip through the, the lines and is going to be able to at least be annoying there in the main otherwise. Two Zerglings folding back and we do interesting see a is this gonna be a proxy hatch what's with this drone or is the drone gonna like do some damage or try to sneak the uh kind of curious what's going on this must be a miss rally right from jess anyway natural expansion taking some time more zerglings being produced that's provoking a second cannon as fisheye does in fact see that warping in that drone making its way back yeah that was just a mistake right there uh we do see an extractor up so i think jess is gonna go We'll see if it was going to be in base three hatch play. Just does have minerals. It looks like saving up towards a additional hatcheries. But uh, plopping down a high blow stand. So almost going what, what looks like perhaps two hatch lurker. A lot of zerglings out on the field. Still no zergling speed. And that probe scout could spoil Jess's day. Again, it's difficult with all these zerglings at the very least. Provoking a third cannon, which is slowing Fisheye's economy down considerably. I'm almost wondering if we're going to see like the, the 10 millimeter drop play right here. Or is it just going to be two base Hydra? Cannon able to get a couple Zergling kills, uh, pushing that back. We do see that assimilator up. Fisheye's cybernetics core going to be somewhat delayed because of all of these cannons being built. A fourth cannon being built. So again, kind of sensing some sort of... And I think that with seeing, first of all, no third and also seeing the Hydra's then. Realizing that Jess is kind of going at least some form of all in off two bases. And that's unfortunate for Jess. Really needed to kill that probe uh, to prevent Fisheye from getting the eyes. Fourth cannon being canceled. Honestly, the cybernetics core right there could cancel the cybernetics core because of just all the scouting information that this probe has managed to, to glean. 
and Hydralisk, yeah, still no third hatchery, so it's just going to be two base all in from, from Jess. An Overlord making its way forward. The Overlord can absorb some initial cannon hits if it gets there. Some more Zerglings making their way across. This is going to be three cannons, a handful of Zelts to try to deal with this. And I think it's, honestly, with what's there, I think it might be enough to repel this. Hydralisk scooting the gap. We'll see. Working on this pylon towards the front. Still might be able to get additional damage with that range done. Two Zelts going to go ahead and push them back. They need to be very, very careful. Another cannon warping in. And we do see, uh, yeah, skipping air, getting another gateway, and Citadel of Adun more rapidly. Just still might have a window here. Fourth cannon warping in. Fifth cannon warping in. Sorry, six cannons warping in on the front. But the Zealots providing enough of the threat where Jess can't really focus in their... The Hydralisks are in small enough numbers. We're really not threatening this cannon line. And with this many cannons, Fisheye should be able to defend this without too much trouble. So one cannon being wiped, taken down, but not before the additional cannons are able to warp in. The Zealots able to get on that corner and able to wipe out, yeah, the rest of that Hydralisk force. So another cannon down, but Jess is basically all in at this stage and needed, I think, more Hydralisks earlier or needed to deny scouting information more efficiently to really make this work. Some Zerglings on the high ground, hoping for something, pecking away at that pylon, but that pylon's not really powering anything of significance. Plus, there's an additional pylon, just in case that was interrupted. Fisheye. Yeah, Fisheye uh, getting leg speed, and honestly, with a couple additional gateways, Fisheye still in, has dedicated a lot to these cannons. But just sitting at... Uh, honestly, expending a lot of resources really puts just behind economically, getting a third hatchery and a fourth hatchery, now at the mineral only. So feeling like some... I think this is kind of a desperation turnaround for Jess. Weapons one, just about finished. Leg speed going to be finished, but not a lot of zealots on the ground to really provide that much of a threat. Two additional gateways being plopped down. So I think in about, I don't know, two minutes around the nine minute mark, we're probably going to see some zealots marching away. And I don't know that Jess is going to have... So trying to transition this into five hatch without... And just pumping drones. So maybe this will play out. But honestly, with the zealots with speed and level one weapons and not a lot of drones... Uh, to kind of back the economic pump that needs to happen to follow this up. I think Fisheye could be in a strong position, but he did expend a lot of his economy on cannons that slowed a lot of this down. So we will see. We will see. Still anybody's match. Uh, still going to give overall favor to Fisheye. Ten, only 10 supply ahead, though, at this stage of things. Level 1 armor now being upgraded, realizing he doesn't quite have the Zealot army uh, to kind of run things across. Third base is up and running. We're starting to see better saturation for Jess at that natural expansion, just kind of pumping drones in the interim. But is that going to result in a sizable enough army to deal with these Hydralis? So Zealots shooting that gap, having to engage a little bit. This Hydralis force being kind of caught out of position as these Zealots are streaming their way across, trying to re-engage, draw those units back. But Fisheye is happy to let the cannons provide some defense right there as he's peeling away with these Zealots, diving towards the natural expansion. And a, that's going to force a creep colony, but honestly, this might be too late. Some drones trying to run up to go ahead and plug that gap. The Zelts can go ahead and end around. Another creep colony being built right there, and I think that this base absolutely sacrificed, if nothing else. If nothing else. And the Zelts just going to peel in, and these Hydals just going to have to watch it happen, basically. So this is going to be, yeah, very quickly wiped out. Just getting a little bit greedy in the follow-up. Pumping all sorts of Hydralisks as a follow-up to try to at least defend to defend that natural expansion. Two additional gateways. Three additional gateways being plopped down from Fisheye. So he's like, okay, let's go ahead and win this on the ground. And play map control that way. The Hydralisks wandering up, which honestly I think is a little bit foolhardy given the Zelt League speed and the level and weapons in position. And that's kind of just donating some Hydralisks. You see, yeah, they realize it and are trying to wander their way back. I wonder if Jess didn't realize that leg speed was upgraded. Drawing them back to the natural expansion... No follow-up units. Fisheye going to go ahead and dive the Hydralisks all the way to that natural expansion. Going to end up losing these Zealots, but not before they wipe out significant amounts of Hydralisks. What is that? Didn't get a good look at the kill count there, but killed all sorts of Hydralisks on the way. And just now in a situation where can't pump drones, just needs to pump additional units, and that's going to allow Fisheye to, again, maintain map control. Templar Archives warping in as well. Fisheye definitely indicating that, nope, I want to win this with units that I've got just building right here, but coming in a little bit piecemeal, and as a result, the Hydralis able to engage these Zelts in smaller numbers, which is going to be the superior engagement. One Zealot actually just streaming across to dive into the main. The additional two Zealots up there going to get wiped out. 
able to maybe get a little... No, not even getting any sort of disruption here at the main. feel like it's a bit of a misplay from Fisheye at, at this stage, kind of donating units like that. Just trying to reestablish that mineral only. Has a lot of Hydralisks, and with that SimCity at the natural expansion, might be able to provide it. But now Jess feeling like, okay, let me go ahead and deny a third base, and might have the timing to do it. Zealot wandering bottom right hand corner just in case there was a sneaky expansion taken. More Zealots making their way across, so that's eight Zealots. If I had a criticism of Fisheye's play, it would be this, that yeah, he just seems to... Um, he ends up, he does a great job with the macro, but it just seems like uh, his unit cohesion, as far as moving a lot of these units out, isn't able to quite capitalize on his, his superior unit counts because of uh, how they kind of stream out and the engagements that are taken as a result. He's wandering up to go ahead and try to take an additional base. Looks like these Zealots are going to get pincered between two groupings of Hydralis. Hydralis, are they going to plug the gap? Going to plug, plug the gap, trap those Zealots, and wipe them out. As a result, they, uh, yeah, get going to get a lot of kills. And this is, keep in mind, this is like with a bunch of gateways, maybe waiting another minute or so, might have had a superior Zealot count or even something else to work with this because this is a six gateways of production. And on paper, I feel like Fisheye uh, should have been in a better position there. Instead, just going to be able to wander up, deny that third base. Third base just coming online for Jess as well. Front door gateway being killed to go ahead. And level one armor has been placed. Some Dark Templar now out, at least a Dark Templar out in the map. Might be able to, I don't think going to be able to take that hatchery out, but might be able to get some drones. Some drones making their way across. And there is no Overlord there. Now an Overlord spotting that, but does Jess realize it? Doesn't look like Jess realized what was going on there. And actually in this era of play, Dark Templar Corsair was a thing. Another, A couple of Overlords being produced, but there aren't any, there's nothing to defend it. So that Gaskin it, so that's one kill, two kill. Three kills. Still no reaction from Jess. Does Jess realize this is happening? I'm not sure Jess realizes this is happening because I don't think there's the alert. And it's going to end up losing basically everything at the main. Finally realizes this is happening, but not before 10 kills. And it basically a complete full round of drones getting wiped out here. Finally, the Hydra is swandering up. And they're, they're not even catching that High Templar. The High Templar are going to wander out with 12 kills and might even be able to get an additional kill. That's a hero High Templar if I've seen one. Doing a huge amount of economic damage to Jess, down to 20, 26, now 29 drones overall. Fisheye plopping down, looks like so, seven gateways here in the background. Some uh, supply, a little bit of supply capping problem. At the front, waiting on level two armor uh, as a follow up. Jess still sitting on a primarily Hydralist force. The lair is online. I do not see Lurker Aspect being upgraded just yet. Double evolution chamber. To really keep this on kind of a ground army sort of play. And Fisheye uh, also producing a shuttle before observers to perhaps get some Dark Templar. Realizing this is just this has always been a feature of this map. It's like a wide open area. You can kind of sneak units in. So if Jess is caught unawares, doesn't have overlords in position, that can result in a uh, can result in Dark Templar just wandering in, getting all sorts of kills once again. A couple overlords vacantly getting killed. Fisheye again staying on top of that macro, well ahead of his Zerg opponent, and finally taking a third base. Main looking somewhat thin, a little bit bedraggled. This is going to be a 14-minute third. Some cannons should be there. Got to respect Jess's play, though. Jess plopping down some additional creep colonies. Yeah, and actually deciding to play this is kind of like, I will get superior exchanges. I'm going to let Fisheye throw armies at me. Uh, I think realizing a little bit of weakness in Fisheye's play is like, okay, yeah, streamline your army in, let it march in one at a time. I will have overwhelming forces. I'll get better exchanges overall, and then I'll turn around and dive at you, basically, um, or play map control starvation from there. Something Colony warping in there at the natural expansion, finally taking that natural expansion extractor. That feels so late uh, overall. Dark Templar dropping, attacking that shut a little bit, but... Already able to get one Hydralis kill. They're going to get bonus kills. There's no Overlord. Finally an Overlord spawning in the main. There is a Sunken Colony right there. And you can see Jess just kind of really, really shelling up. Hydralis on the high ground. Some good, wow, Psystorm bait though. Good Psystorm across those Hydralis. The drones fleeing. There's plenty of Sunken Colonies to engage this otherwise. <coughs> Some decent dodges from Jess, but really nice initial placement. So yeah, that Dark Templar was taken care of at the main, but that might... Well, that's happening. This third base might get it wiped out. And plenty of Psy Storm from Fisheye. Just relentless Psy Storms. These High Templar are just waiting for that. Looks like a handful of them finally getting picked off. But more Hydralisks peeling up. 
for Jess and plenty of creep colonies and the hatchery still stands and not a lot of drones killed otherwise. Ooh, Overlord's eating a lot of that. And Jess calling GG right there. Just feeling Fisheye has overwhelming forces and the Dragoon's going to be able to take that third. Plus, Fisheye has that third base uh, coming online. So Jess with some interesting... Uh, I feel bad for Jess. Not able to get to the round of eight. Fisheye, Fisheye will advance to the round of eight. Hope you guys enjoyed it overall. Yeah, Fisheye... Uh, Winning again behind the power of macro and just pure aggression. And just not able to get it done with Zerg play. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I think, I'm not sure anyone else is casting Hasu League, so I will move on to group C and then group D steadily as she goes. Thanks for listening, everybody.